Hi, I'm Gary Jenkins, and welcome to my show. Boy, do I have something exciting for you today. We're going to paint my favorite subject, roses. These are called luminescent tea roses. Let's take a look at the painting I'll be working from. This is my painting that I had done. And oh boy, look at that. Now the beauty of this particular rose painting is the simplicity of it. It doesn't have a lot of buds and junk floating all over. So this keeps your attention right on the roses. Today's lesson is not only going to be on how to paint these roses and the general approach to it, but I want to show you how to fade leaves into the background so that we're working on many different dimensions and not just on one level, which makes your painting go flat. You see these leaves back here fading in the back? I'm going to be showing you how to take a mop brush and fuzz those out into the back and how to fuzz your petals out so that we have some of your uh, petals in the back fading into the background and some of them coming towards us. Yes, so we get a, a lot of excitement in our painting. Now, the canvas that we have is a 14 by 18 and it already has a color on here. Now this is, uh, you, I take an old coffee can and I mix white gesso, 95% white gesso, and then a touch of dark green and a little touch of red light. Acrylic, this is all water-based, and it dries very fast so that you can get right on. Mix it well in your coffee can. I use a sponge brush to mix. So when you're mixing and you put a little bit of green and red light in there, you don't want to get a bunch of streaks in there. Otherwise, it'll show up up here. Okay. Now, getting started, I think that's probably the toughest thing for people to do. They stare at their canvas and say, oh, how do I start? Well, we're going to just start with some simple little circles. I'm dipping in. I have medium. This is... Uh, uh, linseed oil and odorless terp in here. That's my uh, medium. And I also have a big uh, little jar of regular uh, odorless terp to clean my brush in because you want to keep your colors clean in between colors. Okay. Let's take, oh, let's go down. We'll pick up a little yellow ochre. Really doesn't matter what color you use, but we're going to find. And you can probably just barely see this, but we're going to have a rose here. I'm going to reach down for a little more ochre. And we're going to have another rose up here. Now, we don't want to place your rose on the same level. You notice this one is down lower than this one. Before we start our roses, we're going to come in, take a little touch of medium, a little sap green, maybe a touch of sienna. And we're going to come in here and put, oh, look at that, nice dark color. Maybe not quite dark enough. Maybe we'll use a little chrome oxide green. Beautiful color. Whoa, there it is. Let's put a little, uh, little crimson in there. Let's play a little bit. Whoop, too much crimson. Put a little more sap with it. Kill that crimson. There it is. So you just play around until you find the color you want. We're keeping all these dark colors right up next to where the roses are going, and we pull it out. Did I tell you I have linseed oil on here? I don't even remember if I told you or not. But I have a very thin coat of linseed oil on the canvas, which is letting my colors flow and spread. Now, with that linseed, I, watch how I can come in and fuzz. Can you see me? See how that color just fades off into the background. That wouldn't uh, work if we didn't have that, that linseed. I'm going to bring it out a little bit more. Nice, long, fluid strokes. And we pull our brush and we, and we get on with it. We're going to kind of come in here and we'll grab some of this. Pull that up. Maybe just fade some of that edge out so it's not so hard. Now we're going to come down to the palette. We're going to pick up a middle tone. Maybe if you guys know your values, this is about a number three or four value. I'm going to take this up here and test it. We're going to go, no, that's not dark enough. We'll put a little more black with it. Oh, that's not dark enough. <laughs> Let's take a little crimson and put with that just to 
just a touch of crimson. Ah, there it is. And we're going to come in and we're going to show some leaves coming out. But we're not going to leave it that way because we're going to come in in a minute and fade some of those leaves away. We're going to come way up here. Now watch, I'm going to take, you have to make sure when you use your blending brush that you wipe it on your towel so it's nice and dry. I'm going to come up here and let's, now remember I have that uh, linseed on there and we're just going to kind of fuzz some of these out. Mm -hmm. You see it? Now sometimes when you, when you stroke it this way, it drags some of the paint out into the background. So what you do is you go back this way. You see? You see that? You see how it just pushed? It pushed all those leaves. Now you might get a little tint on the background. That's fine. Well, that's, there's no problem with that. But these now, you really can't tell those are fading until we take a darker green. We're going to come up here and just overlap that slightly. Now, you see how that dark pushed that gray back? Yes. So we have three steps. We have your background tone, we have this tone, your middle tone, and we have your dark. This is where how you get depth to your painting. Very, very simple. We're not going to get complicated with a lot of junk up there. We're going to come down to the bottom. We're going to take our white and come down here and add a little white in sort of a choppy, almost like the ocean. You see it? Yeah. And we're going to add a little pink down here. Just a hint. This Now, everybody has trouble doing this because it's abstract. And it, they put too much color down. It's just a little. And watch the stroke. You see the stroke has energy. That stroke is full of energy. We have many different strokes. We have strokes that go like this. They don't know where they're going. They're up and down and in and out. They don't have the slightest idea where they're going. We have strokes that are tired strokes. They just go, oh, well, that's all I'm going to do. They're tired. Then we have strokes that are, that are full of energy, and they go, yes, I'm glad to be here. Look at me. That's what you want to do. Let's take a little yellow and white. Boom! Look at that sparkle. We need to get some of this, this excitement in your painting. Because without that, we don't have anything. We're just mechanics. Notice how this is fading out. Look how the color, the background color, is working for us. Let's take our white. I better get on those roses. Woo! I'll be saying my goodbyes and you're going to go, where are the roses? Good grief, let's get on with it. Let's come down to the palette. I'm taking some of my medium. And let's take our crimson and white up here. Remember, I have that linseed on there, which is helping this paint flow along nice and loose and free. And these are fairly large, too. Yes. Then we're going to take some crimson, the straight crimson, and put it right in the middle of that rose, just a little. Wipe your brush and pull it out. Can you see that it almost looks like a rose already? And what have we done? Nothing. So you can see how the block in is so important. This part right in here is called the belly of the rose. Now we're not going to finish this little follow up. We're just going to go on to the next one. We're going to take a little medium, not much. When I say not much, that means just the corner of your brush. And on it goes. Oh, I have a little pink on there, but it doesn't matter. Well, look at the green get in. Let it in. Play like a child, play, yes, yes. A famous artist once said, the only time I feel alive is when I'm painting. Who said that? Vincent van Gogh. Was that before he took a little piece of his ear off? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. The only time I feel alive is when I'm painting. 
Isn't that the truth? You guys that paint. You notice when you start to paint how fast time flies. You could start to paint at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You look at your watch and it's 7 o'clock at night. And you go, oh my God, where did the time go? That's because you get lost in your painting. You become one with your painting. I know it sounds weird, but that's what happened. Here's a little white, just a touch of white and yellow. Now, very important to show that belly. That's the belly here and there. We'll take a little white and pink and we'll show a little light. Really just kind of bring that belly out a little bit. Yes. Yes. Now, you notice how when I place this on, it's kind of spotty. Don't smooth it out. Everybody wants to smooth it out. This adds a little texture. Can you see how the white is just bah, 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 bah. It's, it's bouncing? Remember to use paint with plenty of pigment. None of this soft stuff. Cheap paint won't work. Don't do it. If you're going to spend your time and your energy taking classes, use, use the best materials that you can get. Painting doesn't cost that much compared to playing golf, where you have to join the country club. How much does that cost a year? Green fees, all the clubs. This doesn't cost hardly anything. So don't skimp on your paint and don't skimp on your brushes. Because a good tube of paint might cost you two or three dollars extra, but do it because of the pigment. You'll find paint without any pigment, and you try to come up here and you put these lights on. That the lights might look good to you, but two hours later you come back and the white has sunk in, gone. <laughs> and so you pile it on, you pile it on, and oh, you're in trouble. Okay. So let's take our white. And let's come up and pick, watch me, curve that. One stroke overlaps the previous stroke. And there's a petal. You see how simple? Maybe back here we have just a hint. Not every petal has to be hard looking. Some are just, just kind of there petals. You see it? Now here we have some petals that'll stand out. We'll have others that are just foreshortened where we take the brush and just kind of hit it because the petals are straight at us. We'll take a little, let's take a little of our blue and white. We want some nice cool colors way back here. Now we're just going to barely hit the canvas, barely pull those petals out. And if you, sh you, you do what, I show, what I'm showing you, this flower, this rose is going to blossom before your eyes. Yes. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Don't push down too hard. Work from real flowers anytime. Look at that thing. Anytime you can, get the real flowers to work for them. Now this is white with a touch of blue, so it stays soft. Now I'm going to show you something in a minute that really is so cool. <laughs> We're going to take our blending brush. Make sure it's dry. And remember, this was acrylic on the back, linseed on top. We're going to take our brush and watch. Can you see that edge disappear? You see, I just lost it. It just went bye-bye. You see, it just got very misty looking in the back. And as we come up to the front, you see there's a rule of thumb that a hard edge is always opposed by a soft edge. You never have hard, hard, or soft, soft, okay? That's why this back edge, it gives it some dimension. It gives it some distance because it's fading into that background. With the help of our uh, medium, uh, uh, linseed oil, on the canvas. Let's do the next one. Let's see what we can do there. We're going to come down and pick up our white with a touch of yellow. And watch, we want to get some of this foreshortening going. Petals that are straight at us. Mm -hmm. And we notice how we just kind of get in there. Hit, 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 hit. Some places you'll push down hard. And some places there's very light stroke where you want it to start. 
fading away. We might have another petal here coming up with a point on it and fading in the back. We'll put a little point on it here. Boing! Yes. We're going to come in. Oh, watch this stroke. We go this way. Then we paint into it. So it gets a little curved over effect. You see? It's not hard. Just study. And don't be afraid of making mistakes. When you make mistakes, that's the way you learn. And save all your old paintings. Save the ones you don't like. And give them to somebody you don't like. <laughs> you know that person that always asks you for paintings? Hoping you'll give them one? Oh, give them one of the paintings that didn't quite turn out. Look at that. Now, another stroke is you come down straight and then in. It kind of squares off the edge of the palette, uh, petal. Sometimes you're going to be working with paint that's hardly any paint on the brush. It just works its way off the brush, so you just have a hint of color. Listen to that little voice inside of you that says, go for it. Go ahead and do it. It's okay. But nobody listens to that voice because that voice is just a whisper. If that voice were to holler and scream at you, you'd listen. But no, the voice simply says, put some pink in there. Why don't you put some white in there? Why don't you paint beyond what you feel is safe? Go for it. Listen to your voice. It's always right. Don't worry about what people think. Just do it. And painting, painting, you guys, is just for you. It's not for anybody else. When you're all alone, you know what it's all about when you're all alone in your studio and you paint a petal and you stand back and go, did I do that? Or you go away and you come back and it looks like somebody else painted the painting. So painting is just for you. It's, it's, your, it's the wow factor that is just for you. If somebody else appreciates it and likes it, great. If they don't, go someplace else. <laughs> Say bye-bye, go someplace else. I'm having fun. I love what I do and it's for me. If you find people that appreciate your work, so much the better. Work to please yourself. Be your own critic and don't settle for mediocre stuff. You don't even have to start out as a beginner. Everybody has these three levels. Well, you're going to start as a beginner, then you're going to go to intermediate, and then you're going to go up to this level and that level. That's a bunch of baloney. In your mind, for you guys that have never painted before, supposing you said, hey, I'm going to skip past that middle, that beginning stuff. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to watch this guy on TV. I'm going to put this color on, base tone. I'm going to do what he's, he's uh, showing me. And I'm, not, I'm going to start in the middle and go on from there. Why not? It's all in the mind. If you think you're a beginner, you're going to be a beginner. If you think you're, you're in the middle, you're, you're going to be in the middle. Let the others be in the uh, beginning. Many of them just stay there because that's their mindset. They think of themselves as being beginners, and that's what they are. You get what you think about. If you think you're in the middle, that's where you'll be. Watch what you ask for, you might get it. <laughs> look at this thing. Let's take a look at it. Look, boy, look at that. Yes. Now, I'm a rose. I love rose painting. I'm a rose nut. <laughs> My wife, Catherine, grows roses. Here, let me show you some. These are from our garden. Look at these beautiful reds. Got this little wild thing sticking up here. What you need to do is, is if you don't grow roses, go out and buy some. Bring them home. Now, if you're going to paint, it's more important for you to have a passion about flowers. Smell them. 
Feel the petals. Use all your senses when we paint. We use our sense of smell, our sense of touch. And if you get excited just looking at the construction of the flower and how... Did you ever look at a flower? Most people never look, really. Look at a flower, how it's constructed in the middle, the little stuff happening, the, how it's deep color inside and coming out to this pink color out there. Look at the wonderful greens. Feel the passion. If you feel it, you can paint it. If you don't have a feeling, much like a person playing a violin feels the bow growing, going across the strings. They feel the bow vibrating. Their whole body feels it. And when you paint, you're painting with this wooden handle and these hairs. Feel the hair going across the surface of the canvas because it actually will vibrate through here. So you become in tune with the painting. You become one. If you're not in tune with it, you're going to have this block that's going to form between you and the canvas and you won't be able to convey your feelings. For how does it start? It doesn't start with technique and learning, but that's important. But it doesn't start there. It starts with you. It starts with something. You don't have to buy it. You already have it. It's that, that feeling inside of you. Let it out. Let it out. Feel it. Smell the flowers and feel the petals and, and walk amongst the flowers. Catherine walks. We have uh, 80, 90 rose bushes. She walks through the rose garden with her hands touching the flowers. And I swear when she walks along, those flowers turn and watch her. Yes, it's wonderful. But you have to feel it, guys, to get it up here. Okay, let's, woo, got the wrong breath. Mm -hmm. Let's take and come up here. And we're going to get another, ja oh, look at that. Oh, can you just barely, don't throw these things. This, we want sensitivity. Yes. I love these roses. Let's take blue. We haven't used our, any of our cool color. And we want to find a little cool... Oh, yes, but we're not screaming. We're not saying, oh, look at the blue. Look at how smart I am. I'm putting cool color. It's so subtle, people won't even know it. We don't want people to know it. We just It's just a hint, a hint, maybe a little... Can you see a little more blue? And as the paint starts to set up, we can get a little more feeling. Oh, look at that coolness. Yes. It, it takes a while to learn how to, to get that feeling. It takes a while. It doesn't come right away. Yes. Just like love. <laughs> it doesn't come right. I don't understand that somebody says, well, they fell in love instantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a while, and it just takes a while for you to get this feeling going. We paint with feeling. We paint with excitement. We paint with passion. You have to have, be inspired by going out in the garden and getting your flowers. You have to have the desire. Yes, and you have to have paint with plenty of pigment in it so we can get all this wonderful, subtle stuff happening. How are we doing up here? I'm going to talk away. And then the show will be over and I'll go, oh my, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. So, a, a technique is important, but the passion for painting comes first. Don't even think that you just have to go and learn technique. Because you know what happens, as I mentioned before, you just learn technique and all you're doing is be, all your paintings will look the same. They'll be what we call cookie cutter paintings. One doesn't look any different than the first. With this style of painting, it goes on and on. Let's take a little green. We need to set a little something underneath. And let's pull that down. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's not get too jazzy. Whew. Soften that up. But you see that just set that flower down. Remember when a rose hits a surface, you have to feel it sitting. And usually when it sits, it scrunches out just a little bit. Now, we don't want to put a lot of garbage in here. We're just going to 
come up to the top and let it get a little very subtle. You see, I'm way up at the top, and I want to get that turn. Oh, yeah, it's a very oh. We just wanted to put them in so you just it's so subtle. It's just kind of there, so people don't see everything right away. They might see something that you have in your painting, and they didn't see it right away. They might see it. Oh, uh, a week later, they'll go, oh, where did that come from? Ooh, ooh. Now, if your edges get too hard, take your blender and blend them down. Try to, anything that's popping, that's what this blender is for. Well, how did we do? I think we did pretty good. I hope your paintings uh, turn out as well. And don't forget to stop, you know, smell those roses along the way. And I'll see you next time. Er is een schitterend nieuw boek uit van Gary Jenkins. Bordevol tips en prachtige voorbeelden. U heeft dit nieuwe boek al in huis voor slechts 35 euro. Of bestel voor dezelfde prijs de gloednieuwe 3 uur DVD met Nederlandse ondertiteling. Gary Jenkins leert u alle geheimen van zijn schildertechnieken. Kijk voor bestelinformatie op omroepmax.nl of teletekstpagina 332.